This is Obaba Batunde from SWAT, and you're listening to Raven Up. Why it's taking you so long to get to us? Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Reef It Up here. And today we are going to be having a chat over Zoom with Australian country music singer Adam Harvey. On September 9th, he's about to go on tour again with his best mate, Becky Cole. And they're also releasing another duets album, The Great Country Songbook, Volume 3, on September 9th as well. So today we have a chat all about it. Before we get into today's interview, we would like to give a shout out to our Patreons, Irene, Bev and Michael. If you haven't heard of Patreon before, it is a great way to support us and keep us running and improving. You pick a membership tier that suits you and your budget per month, and in return for supporting us, we'll give you behind the scenes content and free stuff. You don't have to give much either. You can be a part of our Patreons for as little as $4 a month. Just visit patreon.com forward slash rave it up. You can even donate through PayPal if you don't trust other sites. You can do so just through our email, raveituptv at gmail.com. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. We appreciate anything you can do to support us. Now let's get into this interview. Adam, welcome to Rave It Up. It is a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you going today? I'm really good, Lauren. I'm going well. Thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. Like For our audience, I could not believe it's been back in November 2019 that Adam was last on our show. Wow. How quickly has that time flown, right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty scary. Well, you know, you think about the last three years, they're just like a blur. So, you know, oh. I, I don't quite know what happened or where they all went, but uh, like I was asleep or dreaming or something. But uh, anyway, yeah. it's great. We're back, back into it again and back performing live and recording music. And, uh, um, you know, Lauren, there's no saying. Yeah, it's been flat out, yeah. Yeah, well, it's good. It kind of just went in the blink of an eye because even when I had a look back then, that's when you were doing the reunions tour with Becky oh, wow. and Felicity yeah. and Darren. Yeah. So how did that tour end up going? Did, did yeah, you get through good. it all? COVID it, didn't hit just before that, did it? <laughs> no, we, we got through it all and, we you know, no one tore each other's hair out or no one lost an eye, so to speak. Okay, so we all, we're, we're all still really good friends. So I think that's a, a successful tour. <laughs> yes, definitely, that you can say you could do it again if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So fast forward to this year, September 9th, guys, put it in your diary. You'll be releasing a duets album with Becky Cole titled The Great Country Songbook, Volume 3, available for pre-order now, guys. So in terms of how this all came about, I did hear that, unfortunately, Becky was suffering from one of the worst years of her life. And you checked in on her like nearly every week, right? That you, that's a friend that we all want, isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but yeah, every couple of days I was checking in on her and oh. uh, yeah, I think I was a pain in the backside towards the end, but I, uh, I was honestly that worried about her own mental health. I, I didn't think she'd be here today. And uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just so glad that she's uh, got a spark back and a spring in her step and she's really positive and, and loving, you know, touring and performing live. And, and it's really great to see when one of your best friends goes through that really hard time and then they come back out and they're you know shining brighter than ever oh i got that spark of that passion back for what she loves to do so can you tell us about because you know i've done a little bit of reading and a bit of research but specifically for our audience can you tell us about the moment that you decided to you know you guys came up with that idea of the duets album and another tour together you guys have toured a lot together (laughs) yeah Yeah, well i was um i was uh talking to becky one day checking in on her seeing how she's going and uh, she said you know what i'd really love to do she said if i get out of this um, I'd love to uh, go back on tour with you. And I said, oh, really? And she said, you know, those tours that we did together, they're the happiest moments of my life. And oh. uh, and I said, oh, Beck, you know, I'd, I'll tour with you tomorrow, kiddo. We'll tour forever. And uh, so I started to book this tour and then thought, why not go the whole nine yards and, and record a new duets album to go with the tour? And, uh, and that's Is you're not busy enough, about. Adam? No, no, that's right. So <laughs> everything else got put on hold, um, as you do for your mates. And uh, this became the priority and um, Beck flew up to the Central Coast and recorded her vocals and we finished the album now and uh, as you say it's it's about to be released on the 9th of September so it's all very exciting and, and the tour is all locked in and away we go. 
on the same date, right? On September yeah. 9th. That's when you started. That's talk about everything happening all in the one day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Timing is everything. So uh, now the real fun starts. Um, you know, I get to travel around with Beck and, and work with her on stage every night. And anyone that's seen Becky, um, hopefully they'd agree with me when I say I think she's the best entertainer I've ever seen live. Mm. And to be with her on stage, it's just magical to, to watch her and be able to work with her and really exciting, but also very nervous because, uh, uh, you know, I, I never know what she's going to say next or what she's going to do next. <laughs> it's good. Keeps you on your toes. <laughs> oh, yeah, it certainly does that. It's like a roller coaster. You just hang on and hopefully yep. you, you ride, roll with the punches. Yeah, and hopefully you get to the end. end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you guys have such a beautiful friendship. You know, I think it's something that we all strive to have. As you said, you kind of just paused everything for Becky to help her out. I know this is a bit of a hard question since you guys have been friends for what, over 20 years now? Mm -hmm. What is your favorite memory of your friendship with Becky, whether it's on tour or? Oh, there are, there are so many uh, memories. I, I remember um, back when she just had her, her baby boy, Ricky, who's now in his 20s. And, uh, and I was backstage. I used to rock him to sleep at night while Becky was on stage doing oh. her thing. And uh, one night she came off stage and I'm standing there and I'm rocking little Ricky and he's gone off to sleep and I'm drinking a beer. And, <laughs> and she goes, that really suits you, you know. I said, what, drinking beer? And she said, no, no, fatherhood. And I said, oh, God, as if I'll never be a dad. And lo and behold, you know, I look forward now and I've got, you know, my own kids in their 20s. So it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of great memories that go back a long, long way. And, uh, you know, we've had our ups and downs too. We, we fight like brother and sister too. So it's, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we've had our moments. Yeah, it's good she popped the idea of fatherhood into you, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Long before I'd considered it, that's for sure. Yeah. And and back then, how did you guys originally meet? Did you just guys come together from that very first tour that you were put on together? or? Yeah, yeah. They teamed us up with a thing called Young Stars of Country a long, long time ago. And, uh, yeah, Beck and I just really hit it off. We both had that same wicked sense of humour. And, yeah, there was just some – there was a real chemistry there. And, and uh, you know, we, we clicked straight away and we've stayed really good friends ever since. Um, and uh, to the point that my wife says we're the male and female equivalent of each other, um, and I think Becky takes that as an insult. But, uh, <laughs> it's, Real uh, brother yeah, and sister, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And I remember I was away on tour with Becky, and it was my 10th wedding anniversary, and my wife, Kathy, uh, rang Becky, not me, rang Becky that morning to wish her happy anniversary. And she said, Aww. you've had to put up with him as long as I have, so happy anniversary, <laughs> road wife. Cheers, we made it. <laughs> Cheers, we made it. We put up with him. We haven't killed him yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'd love that you're the kind of person that helps friends out in need. And you're already such a busy man, though. You know, you already have your own tours, your own albums. You're working on a book right now, which I want to talk about a little bit later on. What made you want to actually do the album and another tour? It's not something that's just a little side thing, like just one song, maybe. You decide to go in whole nine yards because I'm sure all those phone calls to Becky were helping anyway. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, when, when Beck said she'd really love to do that, um, I just thought, well, um, maybe it's a, it's a great way. I, I, I just thought it was a really important thing for Becky to get back out in front of her, her fans and that again and feel, I, I, I didn't think because she was in such a dark place, she didn't understand how much everyone out there loves her and cares about her and, and wants to see her, you know, happy again. And I thought a great way for her to do that is to, as they say, get back on the horse and get back out in front of her, her audiences again. And I think at the time she couldn't see it, but I think it was a really important step for her, uh, you know, long road to recovery. And um, I'm, I'm really glad. I'm really glad we're doing it. I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And, uh, you know, once again, we'll make some great memories and, and share some time with, you know, one of my best mates. So it'd be great. Yeah. Plus it help, It probably helps with you being there too, not just her doing it by herself. Yeah. Yeah. I mm. think, I think there, there's a bit of that. When you're on stage, uh, it's an amazing feeling when the crowd are singing along and it's all going really great. It's one of the most incredible things on earth and you're pumped full of adrenaline and there's that atmosphere. But when you get to actually share that with one of your best friends, mm. all of a sudden that feeling of excitement and happiness and that is, is multiplied by about 100. <laughs> and uh, and so it really is. And so I think, yeah, it's uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I know Becky is as well. 
And so are the fans. Well, hopefully. <laughs> We're excited hopefully. too. <laughs> we love you guys hopefully, together. <laughs> hopefully Becky doesn't scare them away too much. No, <laughs> I, I, I'm kidding. sure we'll just be in stitches laughing. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be good fun. So as mentioned before, uh, Great Country Songbook Volume 3 out September 9th. Um, and it's about two best friends, exactly what it sounds like, getting together to record some of their favourite country songs again. So, but this is also your second with Becky and your first was with Troy Cassadaly, wasn't yeah. it? So yeah. how did you know which songs to pick? You, did you just pick ones that maybe you couldn't fit into the first one with Becky? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there was a bit of that. There are so many great songs and great duets out there over the years. And, and Becky and I both had, you know, the, a certain, a, a few songs that we just had to have on the album. We just, I've got to have this on the album. And uh, and then there were other ones, you know, I'd, I'd, you know, look back through some of my old records or Becky would do some research and we'd send each other songs and say, oh, I've found this. What do you think about this? Or, you know, do you think that one would suit us? And, and so you go backwards and forwards and after a few arguments and, you know, carrying on, as I said, we do fight a bit. Um, you know, we finally agree on our final, you know, dozen songs and, and away we go. Well, I had to listen to um, I Don't Love You Much Do I. Oh, I yeah. I'd never heard of that song before and I was like, wow, that's some really good lyrics. Because, you know, yeah. you go in thinking it's about something else and then you're like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's an old Emmy Lou Harris song. And yeah. uh, Emmy Lou Harris recorded that as a duet with a great songwriter called Guy Clark. And uh, and that was one of Becky's I Must Have This on the album. And uh, yeah. and I said, come on, Beck, we can't be singing about how much we love each other because that's, you know, well, anyone that knows <laughs> knows Beck knows that that's never ever going to happen um, for various reasons. So, uh, and she said, "No, no, that that's really how I feel about our relationship and and that magic you know thing that we have together." So she said, "I really want to record it." So on it went, and uh, yeah, it came up really nicely. It was, it's a nice thing to uh, to have those special um, records in time, or you know, look, they, they used to call them records, and I think that was a really good name because it is a it's a moment you're recording a moment in time, and uh, you can ref go back and reflect on that. And yeah, it's it's been uh, I've actually even though I didn't really know the song, it's probably one of my favourites on the album. Yeah, definitely. And how long did the whole video clip take to film as well? Was that all hopefully in one day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, knock it out in a day. That's right. We went to the studio, got a couple of great musos and, uh, yeah, knocked it out in a day. And the album came together really quickly too. I think it um, it only took maybe two weeks to to record from go to way, whereas wow. you know, often, often an album you normally probably spend a month in the studio. Um, and I think the process is often sped up when – the songs are already well-known songs and all the musicians know them and, and you're not trying to, you know, create something, you know, out of, uh, you know, something you've written on a piece of paper and then trying to get the musicians to understand what you want here, there and how you want it to go and sound. When, it, when it's already mapped out, and a lot of those classic songs, you don't want to mess with them too much. Mm. It makes it very easy and, and quite a quick process for the guys to record them. Yeah, instead of a song just out of thin air, right? Just yes. out of nothing you've yes. created. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Well, we lo always love on this show, like the behind the scenes look of, you know, the industry, whether it's music, we also interview actors and things like that. But we'd love to know with, with a covers album too, when it's not your own work, how does that, how do you work around that? Do you have to still get everybody's permission of the people that originally made the song i'm sure a lot of them are probably not even alive anymore too right <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly right and so uh you know through sony music their lawyers talk to you know the the owners of the copyright and usually you know 99 uh, percent of the time they're quite happy as long as obviously they get their royalties and they get their their share of the the publishing money of course that's you've got mm. to do that and it, usually it goes all right there's only ever been maybe once i think or twice uh where we've had real issues um, trying to record uh, someone else's song and so you know often if that happens it becomes so, especially if it's an American you know really popular song it's it's a lot easier just to forget forget about the song because mm. you could spend years and years you know going backwards and trying forwards with lawyers and you know so by then the whole album's done and dusted so yeah it's quite easy to let them go and uh, and just work with the people that are happy to let you um, you know cut their their songs. Do you find like the Australian ones easier then? In that regard? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Most of the 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 Aussie uh, the country music scene in Australia, we're we're all you know pretty laid back, and we all get on you know really well. We you yeah. know we're 
People say it's like a family. I know that's cheesy, but um, and families still fight. Don't worry about that. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, every Christmas at my family, at my house. But uh, uh, yeah, it's um, uh, it is like a, a big community, and and we're all sort of helping one another out and, and looking hmm. out for each other. Well, because a lot of the you know big country music festivals you're all at and tours and things like that, you're all just really always there at every single event together, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, well, really? to be honest, it's it's like a big party backstage because usually we're all all of the artists are off touring different parts of the country at different times. So it's only at those big festivals that we all actually get to you know run into one another and catch up. So it, it, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, as big a party as they're having out the front watching the show. <laughs> there's always a party out the back too with everyone catching up just a big country music family reunion <laughs> <laughs> yes yes something like that yeah. oh that's awesome well let's talk about your tour then too because um you guys can all buy your tickets now on adam's website adamharvey.com.au you're traveling to places like townsville and Mackay. i gotta tell my nan that too because she's up in Mackay. maybe i should get her to come <laughs> along <laughs> we've got uh bathurst perth canberra penrith wogga wogga which place are you guys most excited to visit? I'm sure a lot of the the places on the tour dates you've been to before with Becky, right? Is there any yeah, fun memories yeah. that you can share with us? Oh, there always is. Yeah, we've had a lot of great memories. One of my, uh, five, I love I love Queensland. Um, a lot of the Harveys were Queenslanders, and I just love the warm weather. And um, yeah, I love it when you get right up into far north Queensland and the and the landscape changes and it's all that tropical rainforest and the mountains and everything that's it's beautiful uh but uh, and then I always love to go back to my old hometown in Geelong in Victoria yeah um and uh, I spoke to my mum yesterday and she said it is freezing down there so I'll have to we'll rug up for that one but uh yeah with some great memories I still one of my favorite memories was uh in uh, Western Australia we were playing at Albany uh, down the bottom of Western Australia and uh, in the entertainment centre down there. And, and Becky used to get the band to go off the stage and she'd sing this beautiful song she wrote called Poster Girl and she'd yep. sing that on her own, you know, as a solo thing. It was a really great moment in the show. And anyway, that day I went down to the joke shop and bought one of those little stink bombs and uh it's like a it's like a foil packet about say that big and you squeeze it together and there must be two chemicals i don't know how it works but when they once you squeeze it and those chemicals react it swells up and then pops and the smell of that will you will never ever forget it so anyway yes, becky's got it. rid of the band yeah okay yeah so <laughs> i've squeezed this thing together we're all on the side of the stage behind the curtains and i've slid it out across the beautiful polished wooden stage and it's gone right out and landed right under a microphone stand and she's in full flight you know singing this poster girl and bang this thing's going pop and like the stink and and the people in the front row are just like my god you know and becky's singing with tears rolling down her eyes and all the <laughs> mascaras running and she's trying to do that and yeah afterwards uh, the people up the back of the theater um thought that that was the most heart-wrenching rendition of poster girl they've ever ever heard <laughs> and uh, the people in the front row thought that beck must have had a curry for dinner Oh my god! <laughs> I was gonna say she's so dedicated. She just kept going. <laughs> she kept going, yeah. And then but I'm yeah, guessing she was... tried to kill you when she went off stage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I copped a, a bucket of ice uh, one morning while sleeping in, in bed. So yeah, we all we we get one another. We always get square. Yep. <laughs> Any more pranks? You guys do that every single tour. Oh, yeah, there's always something going on. I'm busy racking my brain now thinking, now, how am I going to stitch her up on this next one? And how is she going to stitch me up? So you've got to mm. always keep a, you know, an eye over your shoulder and uh, you never know. But it's all No sleeping in, Adam. No, no, it's part <laughs> of the game. Well, over the 20 years, you guys have toured Australia together, what, a dozen times? Like, that's a yeah. lot. So has it gotten to the point where now it just feels like you're kind of like roommates that you kind of just know each other's routines and what you're going to be doing? and. Yep. Yeah, it, it is a bit like that. And what we try and do is um, uh, travel in different cars through the day because otherwise we get sick of one another. I was about um, to say, do you yeah. get sick of each other? <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> and so at the end of a tour, we go, well, that's it. You know, that's it. I've got to get away from you. And she says, I've got to get away from you. And so we go off and do our own thing for, for a couple of years. And then I think we must forget you know, the, the bad habits or something and then say, hey, we should go back on tour together. Wasn't that great fun? <laughs> it's funny how you forget the, you know, the other stuff and remember all the great stuff, but yeah. um, that's that's normally the way it works. So, uh, yeah, we're up to, I think this will be our 13th uh, tour around Australia together. 
Wow. Congratulations. Mm. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> I a big know, big achievement <laughs> with I the don't same know, person. Becky would be, you know, Becky might not be thinking that that's fantastic, but anyway, we're going for it again. She did want to do this tour, remember? She said yes. she was some of her best yep. times of her life. So yep. and I yeah, she kind of did it to herself. <laughs> in a few months' time, she's going to regret that and go, what was I thinking? Oh, my God. Yep, should have done this by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and as you mentioned, when you go back to your hometown, that's cold, as your mum mentioned, mm. and then Queensland gets really warm now that we're coming out of winter now. Does that mean you just got to pack heaps of different clothes? Like, how does that work? Or you just shop <laughs> when you're there? Yeah, well, no, I'm sure your, your mum has heaps of stuff for you still there, does she? Pack, pack plenty of stuff. Yeah, good old mum. Yeah, she's still got a bunch of stuff there at home. But yeah, you've you've just got a good of uh, pack light, but be prepared for anything. Um, mm. It's something that you get used to. And I never ever let my wife pack uh, for me anymore because many years ago I was away on tour, and then I got home and I was flying over to America, and I would literally had to get home. You know, get change, have a shower, grab my case, and go to the airport. And wow. uh, and I said to Kath, "Oh, do you mind throwing some stuff in the in the case for me?" And anyway, my wife Kathy said, "Yeah, of course, no worries." So anyway, I got on the plane, flew over to uh, to America, landed. The first thing you do is you want to have a shower, you know, get some clean clothes. And so I uh, opened up my suitcase, and my wife had packed all of her lacy undies instead of mine. Oh, <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> Does that mean the whole trip you had to wear those? <laughs> yeah, you get used to them. Yeah, I've got a pair on now, actually. No, I have. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, that Makes was you feel confident. Funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. Anyway, she got me a beauty that time. Yeah, that's the see. That's what you. That's what happens when you keep doing practical jokes on everyone else. You yeah, get exactly. Be, even yeah, your wife does it to you. Always uh, pack your own clothes. Yeah. Well, I have to bring this up too before we chat about your book. You and Becky also hosted the 50th Golden Guitar Awards in April. Congratulations <laughs> yeah. and left oh, the audience yeah. in stitches laughing. What Was that really nerve-wracking? Because I'm guessing there's heaps of cameras for that because it is televised and yeah, it's, um, heaps of people it, in the audience. It, it, yeah, there was, to be honest, you know, I was more nervous about um, hosting the awards with Becky than I was about, you know, whether or not I'd win a golden guitar or not, you know. So yeah. it was, um, yeah, it was it was pretty uh, nerve wracking. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm always worried about Beck because I, uh, you never know what she's going to say or what she's going to do. And uh, it, it was great fun. And uh, yeah, we had a ball, even though it, beforehand I was like, oh, I don't think I want to do this. And then afterwards, Beck and I both said, we'd love to do this again. So if we hopefully we'll get the gig next year oh fingers crossed it's funny everybody else in the audience is like really nervous about if they do win it what their acceptance speech will be and you're just like well i've got to host the whole thing <laughs> and i <laughs> i'm i'm with someone that can just chuck anything at me and i gotta be ready for it it's literally it the be best the acting class right. ever isn't it yeah all, all this improvisation in the, in, in the back of my head, I'm thinking this could be the last time that I ever host the Golden Guitar Awards. We could be thrown out, if, yep. yeah, depending on what happens. <laughs> Not asked for any other opportunities. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, with this amazing book, it's a whole collection of stories from the road, kind of like what we're hearing today, which is fantastic, called Tales from the Road. So is there any release date for this yet? Have you totally finished writing it or is it still in the process? Yeah, well, it's funny. Um... <laughs> The plan was about halfway through this year to release the book, um, and then of course, you know, everything everything got put on hold because, uh, you know, obviously with Beck and, and all that, and that's you know, you take your best friends take priority over, you yeah, know, whatever else you're doing, and and so I hope next year that'll be the plan. We'll release the book, and uh, there's nothing nasty or mean in there. It's um, it's all just the good, funny, inspiring, crazy things that have happened to uh, to not only me but all of my other country music mates. So oh. I've interviewed a whole bunch of them. And, you know, like Troy and Gina and Becky and, you know, people like that. And so I think people, hopefully they'll enjoy getting a bit of an insight into, you know, some of the crazy things that have happened, you know, outside of being on stage. Because a lot of people come to the show and they see their favourite artist on stage for an hour or so, but then they have no idea what goes on for the other, you know, 20 hours of the day. So hopefully yeah. we can paint a picture and, uh, yeah, as I said, nothing mean or nasty because I'd be sued or divorced or Becky Cole would kidnap me and you'd never <sighs> find me again. Just a room full of stink bombs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. So it's a bit of an interview book, is it? 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there's uh, there's stories from uh, just people, great mates of mine, uh, who you know I've, I've become really good friends with over the years, um, uh, and you know even people like Kevin Bloody Wilson, who's one of my best friends and a very funny man, um, and uh, so, you know things like from Becky Cole and as I said Gina Jeffries, Troy, a whole bunch of people. So yeah, it's a it's a good uh, good insight into some of the funny things that we get up to. Well, I can't wait to read it. You're going to have to come back on the show once it's out, all right? Well, I want to talk that. all about it. Yeah, you bet. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah, definitely. It's part of the to-do list now. <laughs> so I'm guessing probably later in the year or next year. Still don't know. Yeah, I think at the moment we're still looking at uh, putting two dates in with uh, with Becky into sort of February next year. So it'll probably be halfway through the year, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Well, can't keep us up to date, all right? Yeah, will do. <laughs> I know the fans are really excited. And I am too. <laughs> I've listened to you and Becky since yeah. I was, you know, a little kid. Yeah, cool. My mum just uh, always played country music in the house, so very familiar uh, with your work. Yes, you were one of those. Like I'm me, one of brainwashed, those brainwashed as a kid with country uh, music. Yeah, literally since she was breastfeeding me, it's just country yeah, music wow. in the house. So yeah. that's good. That's good. <laughs> So you're also, um, I really want to talk about just because I love talking about giving, uh, paying it forward and giving back. You're also an ambassador for a couple of foundations, Fred Hollows Foundation, so Treat Vision vision Problems and the McGrath Foundation, bring yeah. awareness to breast cancer. Why yeah. did you choose, the, choose these in particular? Is, well, is it close to your heart? Yeah, well, the first one, uh, the Fred Hollows thing sort of almost happened by accident. And I was at a, a fundraising event and uh, met Gabby Hollows, uh, Fred's wife and then we became really good friends and and she sort of said why don't you come with us up to the northern territory and see firsthand what uh, what we actually do in those remote communities and so I went up there and uh, I remember the first time was with Jimmy Little wonderful man Jimmy Little and uh, we went up there and saw what they did and sang for the kids you know and stuff in those communities and saw it firsthand so I sort of got really inspired to, uh, to get involved and raise money for those guys. And then uh, my wife had a bit of a scare um, herself uh, with uh, and had to have some surgery. Um, and so we decided to get involved with McGrath Foundation. And uh, yeah. we have these great shows every year in Tamworth called Country Turns Pink and, and raise a bunch of money for them. And, and it's been great to go and meet all the team. Um, and, and, of course, uh, Glenn McGrath as well. Uh, and so, yeah, it's something I'm, I'm really passionate about doing that. And, and it's amazing. It's how many, it's really surprising how many women that you talk to after the shows or ladies or even, even blokes that have been directly or indirectly affected by, um, you know, breast cancer. It, it's quite frightening. And, and I think um, because most of the time we spend is out in those r- remote, you know, rural country areas performing, because that's our crowd, you know, that's who we, mm. who we play to. And I think it's, it's a really great uh, program that McGrath Foundation are doing. They're, they're getting these breast care nurses into those country areas where, you know, sadly a lot of people miss out on, on a lot of medical um, expertise. And, and, you know, so I think it's, it's a really good thing to help those, uh, you know, little country towns and the remote uh, communities. Well, I want to say thank you so much for paying no, it forward and raising awareness me. yourself, no, especially no, as a man, you know, it seems to be a, uh, not to be sexist, but I guess a real woman thing to do is raise awareness of that. But it's great yeah. coming from a man too. It's a, you know, it's, it's a scary thing when, um, where, when the person that you love and your, your soulmate is, you know, staring down the barrel of something that could be potentially, you know, life threatening. It sort of, yeah, mm. it's, it changes the way you look at a lot of things. And so, yeah, I, I get as much, I get as much enjoyment doing those things as I do, you know, playing any gig anywhere, you know, it's really good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And everyone <laughs> go check out those websites and, Look, yeah, look them sure. up as well if they if the audience don't know about them. They're two amazing foundations. That's why I wanted to bring them up. Thank, thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> as soon as I saw that in the bio, I was like, I have to talk to him about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Adam, even though you've already achieved so much in your career, what else can we expect from you in the future, especially after this tour? Because I heard, did hear in the first half of 2021, you know, you were on your Highway 1 tour before the COVID lockdown. So, when will you be continuing that? Did you end up at being able to? Or Yeah, it's sort of, it was a funny thing. It was all disjointed and stopped and started and rescheduled and reprogrammed. And, you know, ironically, I had this album that was all about driving around Australia in your caravan and camper van. And it was 
the one thing no one was allowed to do. Yeah. Um, so I just thought, you know, timing is everything. We said that earlier. Um, so, yeah, I, the plan, um, it's you've got to keep planning ahead, even though, you know, over the last few years, it's probably easy just to sit in the corner and rock backwards and forwards and gaze at your navel, you know, but you've, you've got to keep planning ahead. So, you know, we've got this book to, uh, to, to release that next year. And then, you know, I've already already starting to come up with ideas for, for new songs and, and, you know, recording a new album. So it's, oh, uh, I'll just keep doing that. I love doing it. So I'll, you know, keep doing it as long as I can. And, and the older you get, the, the more you appreciate the fact that you know, not many people get to do what they love for a living. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. Yeah. And we love your songs. So keep releasing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like these days more people are just doing the singles than the albums yeah. but we yeah. you know we love it all yeah that's great and the country music um audience is uh the the, the country music listeners are very loyal mm. um if they like what you do they tend to stick with you you know right throughout your career unless you go and do something crazy and end up in you know jail or whatever but that might work look at johnny cash or that. but um yeah so it's or it's if you change to a whole different genre of music <laughs> that's right yeah yeah they don't they don't like that as much uh but um yeah they are really loyal and so we're, we're pretty lucky whereas i know like with my kids they, they sort of chop and change all the time and they'll be right into something for this week and then next week they've moved on you know like a plague of locusts they just move on to something else and then move on to something else yeah and leave it whatever behind um mm. so it's, it's really really interesting to see the way they you know follow their music and uh yeah it's it's quite different yeah definitely well keep us up to date all right i would love to have you on again just consider yeah, it your second awesome. home thank you <laughs> Before we finish up today, would you like to play a game with me, Adam? I thought it a, has a great competitive element and maybe when we eventually have Becky on, you can set the bar nice and high for her. Ooh, okay, the pressure's on. Yeah, pressure's on. So it's a game here on Rave It Up, very legendary. It's called the Two Minute Hot Seat. And okay. what I do is I just ask you various questions and you just have to pick your preference. So it's like dogs or cats or singing or dancing. Ooh. Very easy. It's all about yep. you. <laughs> And Easy. you have to answer as many questions in two minutes as possible. Oh. Yeah. And then when we finish, we'll see where you sit on the leaderboard up against everyone else. Let's uh -oh. play the game on the show. <laughs> okay. So in terms of like Zoom interviews, top of the leaderboard answered 61 questions. Wow. So, in two minutes. I know. Let's see how you go today. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. And then set the bar nice and high for Becky. <laughs> you got the clock there ready to go. I've Look got at the you. clock here and I'll just change the view so I can see us both. Here we go. All right. You ready, Adam? Ready. All right. Really. Here we go. Three, two, one. Facebook or Instagram? Facebook. iPhone or Samsung? iPhone. Apple or Android? Apple. Rap or rock music? Rock. Rock or pop? Rock. Pop or country? Country. <laughs> Beach or mountains? Beach. Beach or pool? Oh, pool. Skiing or snowboarding? Neither. Comedy or action? <laughs> Comedy. Blondes or brunettes? Blondes. Sweet or salty? Salty. Sunglasses or hat? Oh, sunglasses. SUV or convertible? SUV. Mac or PC? Mac. PlayStation or Wii? <laughs> I don't play either, so I don't know. Well, we'll skip that. Singing or dancing? Singing. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Italian or Chinese food? Italian. Summer or winter? Summer. Kim Kardashian or Scarlett Johansson? Ooh, Scarlett. Johnny Depp or Will Smith? Will Smith. Mall or online shopping? Uh, mall. Cinema or home movie? Cinema. Ice cream or gelato? Ice cream. Cake or cookies? Okay. Cookies or cookie dough? <laughs> Cookies. Family or friends? Family. Football or soccer? Football. Christmas or your birthday? Christmas. Night or day? Night. Bus or train? Neither. Straight train. or curly hair? <laughs> curly. Eye colour blue or brown? Blue. Vampire or werewolf? <laughs> As in what I'd like to be or what I'd rather kill me with, a werewolf. <laughs> Texting or calling? <laughs> Texting. Sydney or Melbourne? Sydney. Friday or Saturday? Saturday. TV or movies? Um, uh, yeah, movies. Starbucks or Gloria Jeans? Oh, Gloria. Snow or surf? Surf. Harry Potter or Twilight? What was the first one? Harry Potter. Oh, Harry Potter. Okay, yeah, Harry Potter. 
Family Guy or The Simpsons? <laughs> I love both, but Family Guy. McDonald's or Hungry Jacks? Ooh, Hungry Jacks. Red Rooster or KFC? <laughs> KFC. <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that vampire werewolf question was hilarious. I don't think yeah, anybody's that gone good. that morbid. I... Yeah, what do I want to be killed with? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure what that meant. But... <laughs> you know, it's just a phenomenon now. People are just like, yeah, I love vampires or I like werewolves. Oh, okay. That sort of question, yeah. Like, what would you rather be or what would you rather have, you know, murder you? Yes, great. But both bad. I don't want to be, I don't want to have either. <laughs> Yeah, he died peacefully. Uh, I should have like chucked werewolf. another question in. I should have been like <laughs> Troy Casadaly or Becky Cole. <laughs> oh well, see, I, I, I often say to Becky Cole, you know, where I, every now and then I sing a duet with Troy Casadaly, but I say to Becky, I think of you all the time. Oh, I always think of you when I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. How many questions do you think you answered in that oh, time, I don't Adam? Know. I reckon I was probably nowhere near sixty. It must have been what thirty, maybe. Oh, still more than that, which I'm happy to say. Oh, You've answered, good. bit of a drum roll, Woo, 45 questions. Oh, there you good thing. Yeah, that's look at you. Well know, beyond I, my stature in life. I, I, that's, I chucked I some know. hard questions at you, though, so, you know, that's understandable. <laughs> so you're sitting at a Zoom leaderboards. You're sitting 13 on the Rave It Up leaderboard. Does that right. sound good? <laughs> that's pretty good with me. Now, do me a favour. Give Becky some real, real hard ones. Tricky I will. Ones. All, All right, right, I will. I promise. <laughs> and if we ever uh, have an interview in person, we'll redo the game. I know it's a lot easier when it's in person as well. Yeah, that's the go. I look forward to that. But, hey, yeah. thank you so, so much for uh, taking the time out to have a chat and plugging the tour and everything. I really oh, appreciate it. You're welcome. And you're welcome on the show anytime, okay? You just thank you. Keep it up to date and keep me in touch, I mean. Keep in touch with me. So we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview, but there's a bit of a closing statement, Adam. What, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14-year-old self? Oh, wow. Um, I'm going back. Yeah, okay. Um, happiness is not getting everything you want. It's wanting what you've already got. Ooh. And if you're happy with your lot in life, it's very, very hard to be unhappy. So 14-year-old Adam was very, very driven and, you know, very, you know, wanted everything and wanted to win everything and conquer the world and be number one, and, you know. And then as you get into older, you realise how lucky you really are. So I'd want to make sure I instilled that in 14-year-old in Adam. Yeah, I love quotes. I'm going to write that one down. That, that gave me go. goosebumps. Thank you. Great way to end the interview today. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Really appreciate it. And if our audience want to find out what you're up to in the future and go buy the tickets and everything, yeah, where should yeah. they go? Is your website Just, the best or Facebook it. and yeah. stuff? Yeah, uh, Facebook have got all the links to tickets. Uh, you can go to adamharvey.com.au or go and check out beckycole.com. Yep, perfect. Lovely. Easy enough to find you. Good luck with the rest of the tour, and I can't wait to read the book as well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, please visit our website, raveituptv.com. All of the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy, including the previous interview with Adam Harvey back in 2019, back when we had the radio show. <laughs> And also, while you're there, please check out our book, Knowing What I Know Now. And while you're there, there's also a mini ebook called Staying Strong, Finding Inner Peace During Hard Times that I wrote last year, which might actually help you if you're going through any mental health struggles. And also, if you'd like to further support us here at Rave It Up, please visit patreon.com forward slash rave it up. You can pick a membership tier that works with you and your budget for as little as $4 a month. It's like a coffee, right, guys? And in return, you get free stuff and bonus content and rave it up. Please spread the word with your friends and we'll see you in the next video.